Saints Episcopal Church, Austin, Texas. I'm Gregory Eaton, the organist choir master of the church, and this is our 14th hymn sing video, part one of Hymns for Christmas. Let's begin with prayer. O oh God, you make us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we begin with the hymn that I think many, many churches begin their Christmas Eve celebration with, and that's number 83 in the hymnal, O Come, All Ye Faithful. As I say, it's generally used for an entrance hymn uh, in many churches, and, and you may be interested to know that the word introit, which we use for music at the beginning sometimes, comes from the Latin introivo, which means I enter in, and it is the first phrase of introibe, in, sorry, introibo ad altare dei, which is I go in to the altar of God. So this hymn helps us to enter into the celebration of this most wonderful commemoration of the incarnation of God in the child Jesus. The hymn invites us first to go to Bethlehem and see the child. In the second verse, the words from the Nicene Creed invite us to acknowledge this baby as God incarnate. Remember, God of God, light of light, true God from true God, so that's the Nicene Creed, and in this text it says, God of God, light from light eternal. So that's where we get the Nicene Creed connection. Um, the third verse uh, claims the singing of the angels and, and helps us to join in with them. And the fourth is our greeting to Emmanuel, God dwelling among us. So. John Francis Wade uh, was born in England in 1711, um, and he's now generally recognized as both the author and the composer of this hymn, originally written in Latin in four stanzas. The earliest manuscript signed by Wade is dated about 1743. A Roman Catholic, he was apparently moved to France because of discrimination against Roman Catholics in 18th century England, particularly after the Jacobite Rebellion of 1745. He taught music at an English college in Douai, France, and hand copied and sold chant music for use in the chapels of wealthy families. This is his most enduring contribution, and I think um, you will agree with me that it is one of the great hymns of Christmas. So let's begin with hymn number 83, O Come, All Ye Faithful.
our second carol today is It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. The words for this are by the American Unitarian minister Edmund H. Sears, who lived from 1810 to 1876. A lifelong native of Massachusetts, he wrote quite a few hymns. Uh, this one is his most enduring. In uh, the, the 19th century, the Reverend Dr. Morrison wrote, Sears' second Christmas hymn was sent to me as editor of the Christian Register, I think, in December 1849. So that gives us a date for this hymn. I was very much delighted with it, and before it came out in the Register, read it at a Christmas celebration at a Sunday school in Quincy. I always feel that, however poor my Christmas sermon may be, the reading and singing of this hymn are enough to make up for all deficiencies. I think it's a very important hymn, uh, particularly in this year when we've been divided by pandemic. Political divisions have been uh, at the forefront of people's minds. Um, homelessness, hunger, all sorts of problems are occurring. And so I want you to listen to the third verse. Yet with the woes of sin and strife the world has suffered long. Beneath the heavenly hymn have rolled two thousand years of wrong. And warring humankind hears not the tidings that they bring. Oh, hush the noise and cease your strife and hear the angels sing. The tune Carol is by another 18th century Massachusetts native, Richard Storrs Willis. He was a composer of hymn tunes, an educator, and a music critic. This is his best known tune today. And so I invite you now to hush your noise, cease your strife, and hear the angels sing as we sing together hymn 89 in the hymnal, hymnal 1982, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear.
Christmas celebration would be complete without Hymn 111, A Carol Silent Night. This German hymn may be one of the most charming in the repertoire. The words are by uh, Josef Mohr, who was born into a humble family in 1792. His mother was a seamstress and his father was an army musketeer. He was a choir boy in Salzburg Cathedral as a youth and studied at Salzburg University and was ordained in the Roman Catholic Church in 1815. He was a priest in, in various churches near Salzburg. The English translation can seem nonsensical, especially in the first verse. Listen to the words, though, when spoken. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright round yon virgin mother and child. Holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace. That makes more sense, doesn't it, than the way the melody chops it up. And the German makes more sense with the music than the English does. But I just want you to listen for those words and, and understand what they're meant to mean. The tune, Stille Nacht, is by Franz Gruber. You have heard the story in the small quiet town of Oberndorf, Austria, on a snowy Christmas Eve, a priest and organist wrote what is now the most beloved Christmas carol worldwide. The stories abound as to the exact circumstances of the hymn's origin, and there are societies, believe it or not, dedicated to the task of protecting the authentic hymn text and story. It's important to not simply listen to what we might consider a quaint, nostalgic uh, carol, but to sing out the depth of these words. For the dawn of redeeming grace is something far greater and grander than any song we could ever write. Here in, in the performance that I've done with the um, section leader quartet at All Saints Church, I've used an arrangement of that third verse with the Dawn of Redeeming Grace by American composer Dale Wood. And I do want to say about the hymns in this video, these were designed for use in online worship and so I wanted the organ loud enough that people could sing with it at home and the voices just enough so that they could hear some support. It's not like some of the other hymn sing videos where the voices are very present. So, I hope you'll understand that and enjoy singing the carol, Silent Night.
So how can we say Merry Christmas without saying joy to the world? Isaac Watts, one of the most important hymn writers in English, was the son of a schoolmaster and born in Southampton, July 17, 1674. Um, he's said to have shown remarkable abilities as early as his childhood, beginning the study of Latin at age four and writing respectable poetry at the age of seven. At the age of 16, he went to London to study in the Academy of the Reverend Thomas Rowe, an independent minister, and became an independent minister himself. Joy to the world is a wonderful explosion and expansion of the word joy in the vein of Psalm 98. It's one of the most beloved Christmas hymns, and I, I think you all know that as well as I do. If you'd like to hear a very interesting performance of this, there's a wonderful special that was called A Claymation Christmas. I don't know if it's available on YouTube or not, but uh, if you can find it, um, it's got some wonderful uh, carols, We Three Kings, and, and it's got joy to the world. Now, Antioch, the tune, has its origins in the music of George Frederick Handel and was adapted into hymn tune form by the American musicologist Lowell Mason, considered by many to be the father of American church music. Mason was one of the early conductors of the Handel and Haydn Society in New England. He, he wrote all kinds of, of treatises and instruction manuals on how to do music in church, collected music, distributed music, and it's because of Mason that we have this marvelous tune, Joy to the World, which derives from the work of Handel. So, let's close this video and say a Merry Christmas to everyone out there by singing hymn number 100, Joy to the World.